so uh, now we uh, will discuss about uh, the next topic which is uh, curvilinear motion so consider now the continuous motion of a particle along a plane curve uh, so which is uh, this figure here uh, so at time t the particle is at uh, position a so a particle is moving along this um, uh, orange path and at time t the particle is at position uh, a uh, and the position of a uh, is specified by this um, uh, position vector r uh, which is measured from uh, this uh, convenient uh, fixed origin o uh, this can be any any point here so r is the position vector of uh, of a uh, and now uh, if the uh, magnitude and direction of r are known at time t so then the position of the particle is completely specified now at time t plus delta t uh, the particle is at a dash so now the particle is moving from a to a dash uh, uh, and during uh, uh, interval uh, delta t and the a dash is located um, uh, at this position here and the position vector of, uh, uh, of A dash is R plus delta R. So delta R is uh, uh, this vector here which is from A to A dash. We note of course that uh, this combination is a vector addition and not a scalar addition. So as you can see in this figure that R plus delta r is r plus delta r so this uh, uh, vector uh, our position vector uh, which is the position vector of a dash is r plus delta r but this addition is a vector addition um, and this r here is uh, uh, is a position uh, position vector of uh, of this a and then you have delta r which is again uh, 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 a vector from a to a dash so when you add these uh, two vectors together uh, using the head to tail rule so you will get this uh, r plus delta r vector which is the position vector of a dash so now we can uh, define a displacement uh, in this curvilinear motion uh, in the previous uh, uh, topic we discussed a rectilinear motion where the body was just moving uh, in a straight line but now the body is moving in a curve so the displacement of the particle during the time delta t is the vector delta r so delta r is uh, is what we call is the displacement which represents the vector change of position uh, and is clearly independent of the choice of the origin so delta r uh, is nothing to do with the uh, with the o point so if you change the o point so for example if you uh, if you change the point to somewhere here so this is this is our new o so again we will say that uh, the uh, position vector of a which is r will be this point here and the position vector of a dash will be this point here this will be r plus delta r now you can see that r and de delta r is changing but but delta r uh, is is uh, uh, is again from a to a dash so which is independent of the of the choice of o okay so if an origin uh, we are uh, were chosen at some different location the position uh, r uh, would be changed but delta r would be unchanged as you as you saw here now in in 1d uh, or in rectilinear motion uh, it was hard to differentiate between uh, distance and displacement but in curvilinear motion we can uh, differentiate between displacement and distance so now the distance in this case you can define is the distance um, actually traveled by the particle as it moves along the path from a to a dash so which is um, when the particle is moving along this orange path so the this uh, the distance will be this uh, this line here and you represent this by delta s um, and delta s is measured along this uh, orange 
orange path uh, and thus we distinguish between the vector uh, displacement so you can see that delta r is the shortest uh, distance between a and a dash which is a vector and the scalar which is delta s is a scalar quantity so now um, you can uh, define um, uh, define velocities here so the average velocity uh, of a particle between a and a dash is defined is uh, this equation here so if you divide uh, this delta r not delta s delta r uh, which is displacement divided by delta t which is the time taken when the particle move from a to a dash uh, which is a vector whose uh, direction is that of uh, uh, delta r so obviously uh, this v is a vector uh, and delta r is a vector and whose magnitude is the magnitude of delta r divided by the, by the delta t now the instantaneous velocity v of the particle is defined is the limiting value of the average velocity as the time uh, interval approaches zero uh, this is the similar definition as we did in the uh, in the previous case uh, so here we can say that uh, velocity which is a vector and its uh, instantaneous velocity can be written as like this so when uh, delta t approaches zero for the average uh, uh, velocity so this is what we call is the uh, instantaneous velocity this is the definition of the instantaneous velocity and we observe that the direction of delta r approaches that to the tangent of the path is uh, delta t uh, approaches zero uh, and thus the velocity v is always a vector uh, which is tangent to the path so as you can see uh, on this uh, in this figure here that at position a when you calculate the instantaneous uh, velocity uh, which will be this uh, v here and v is uh, tangent to this um, uh, orange path similarly if you want to calculate the uh, the velocity at point a dash uh, again it will be uh, tangent to the uh, to the path uh, so this is how you uh, finding out the direction of the instantaneous uh, velocities now the instantaneous velocity can be uh, written is uh, dr by dt uh, and obviously velocity is um, uh, is a vector r is a vector here so therefore we are writing these arrows on the top of v and r uh, and as we did in the previous case uh, this will be uh, will be just r dot so we can say that uh, the velocity is the rate of change of the uh, of the position vector or in this case uh, which is r dot so this is the uh, the change the rate of change of the position vector is what we call is the uh, is the velocity now as as we already know uh, uh, we derived in the previous slide that v was equal to limiting value when delta t approaches zero uh, and that is uh, delta r divided by delta t r v is equal to dr by dt or uh, you can say it is r dot now again you can you can also see in these figures so the velocity of a particle at a is denoted by the tangent vector v as uh, you can see here in this figure and the velocity at a dash is uh, represented by this this uh, velocity vector which is v dash and as you can see here the velocities are are vectors so if the velocity is changing uh, from a to a dash so as you can see in this case uh, even if the magnitude of the velocity is the same but still you will have uh, you will have uh, you will see the uh, uh, some some change in, in in velocity and this is because the velocity is a is a vector quantity and clearly there is a vector change in the velocity during the time delta t when the uh, initial velocity is this one the final velocity is this one so this means that there is some change in the velocity which you can you can write from uh, this vector here so this is the final velocity v dash this was the initial velocity v and the delta v is the change in velocity 
um, and obviously uh, this is what we do is a vector uh, vector addition uh, so the change delta v must equal the velocity at a dash so we can write so here we can we can write this equation that uh, v dash which is again a uh, velocity vector is equal to the velocity vector at a and plus delta v which is again uh, a vector so this this equation uh, is is a vector equation so this means that uh, you will have to you will have to perform this operation uh, uh, using the uh, the procedure of vector addition now inspection of the vector diagram show that delta v uh, depend both on the change in magnitude uh, which is length of, uh, of v and the change in direction of v so even if v and v dash are same in magnitude you will you will still have delta v here because it's it is a vector Okay, now we can talk about the uh, uh, about the acceleration. So uh, the definition of acceleration for the curvilinear motion is exactly the same as the definition uh, for the uh, of the acceleration for the rectilinear motion. So first, you define the average uh, uh, the average acceleration here. The average acceleration uh, of a particle uh, between a and a dash. So if the uh, velocity here is uh, uh, is v and here is the v dash. Uh, so the change in velocity as you uh, calculated here was delta v so if you uh, divide delta v by the uh, the time interval which is delta t you will get the average acceleration which is delta v divided by delta t uh, and again uh, which is a vector whose direction is that of delta v so the uh, acceleration uh, will be in the direction of this delta v and the magnitude of this uh, average acceleration is the magnitude of delta v divided by the delta t and similarly we are also interested to know about the instantaneous acceleration uh, a of a particle is defined is the limiting value of the average acceleration is the time interval approaches zero so which is uh, this equation here so when uh, time approaches zero then we, what we will have is the delta v divided by delta t and obviously this is accelerate uh, is a vector velocity is a vector uh, so the instantaneous acceleration is the limit when delta t tends to zero and delta v divided by delta t and by definition the derivative uh, so then uh, we can write is that this this equation is just the uh, just this thing here dv by dt and obviously a is vector v is vector and you can also write this is a v dot which is the uh, time uh, uh, derivative of the of the velocity here now we can uh, we can talk about the uh, rectangular coordinate system which is x y coordinate system as you can see in this case here so the system of coordinate uh, is particularly uh, useful for describing motion uh, when uh, where the x and y component of acceleration um, are independently generated or determined now the resulting uh, curvilinear motion is then obtained by a vector combination of x and y component of the position vector uh, the velocity and the acceleration so in this case uh, as you can see uh, in this figure here that r uh, is a vector of uh, a position vector of point a from here to here and we can see that uh, in x y coordinate system which is the rectangular coordinate system this r can be split into two components or uh, one is the x component and one is the y component here so we can we can write r which is um, which is a vector and which can be write is x i plus y j so this i and j are um, are the unit vectors uh, so i is the unit vector along x and j is the unit vector along uh, along y so we can we can write r r in this in this way here uh, similarly you can you can differentiate this r with respect to time and you will get the uh, velocities so if you differentiate this uh, r with respect to velocity so you will get r dot 
which is uh, dr by dt and you will get x dot which is uh, uh, which is a dx by dt and again this is i and y dot which is the uh, the dy by dt and j similarly you can calculate acceleration uh, which is again v dot and again acceleration is vector uh, v is vector and r r double dot so which is again x double dot along i plus y double dot along j we can also write uh, these um, uh, these vectors so as you can see uh, in this case here that the velocity uh, so this this equation is then uh, vx uh, i plus vy j and similarly x double dot is ax i plus a y j so which you can see in this uh, in this figure here that r can be split into x y uh, so y along j and x along i similarly the velocity v which is the velocity it um, uh, instantaneous velocity at a uh, of a particle and again this can be split into x component which is vx along i which is this vx along i and then vy along j which you can uh, write like this and similarly the acceleration of a particle uh, so if the acceleration is in this direction here the total acceleration it can be split into two components uh, in x direction and in y direction so which is you can see the ax is the x component of acceleration and a y is the y component of this acceleration um, now the uh, you can also calculate the uh, uh, the uh, magnitude of the velocity from its component which is v x square uh, plus v y square so from here you can you can calculate v which is v x square plus v y square under the root and you can calculate this angle here which is uh, tangent theta equal to v y divided by v x and a similar um, idea can be used for the accelerations so if you know the component of the acceleration you can calculate the uh, you can calculate the uh, the magnitude of the acceleration which is a x square plus a y square or a can be obtained using a x square plus a y square under the root now the we can discuss now uh, a projectile motion so an important application of a two-dimensional uh, kinematics theory is the problem of projectile motion so now assume that the um, the altitude change is small enough so that the acceleration due to gravity can be considered constant so if you assume that the uh, acceleration uh, uh, due to gravity is constant uh, and with this assumption uh, rectangular coordinates are useful for the trajectory analysis so again as you can see that we have um, this is the y coordinate this is the x coordinate and assume that somebody throw um, a stone or some object with some initial velocity uh, and which makes some angle theta with the horizontal so this is the uh, initial velocity of the object and this initial uh, velocity obviously can be split into two components so one component is in the x direction one component is in the y direction so the x component is v naught cos theta and the y component is v naught sine theta now we know that if we are uh, close to the ground uh, and the altitude uh, is not very uh, very high then we can assume that g is constant uh, similarly the uh, uh, at any specific point for example at this point here the total velocity is um, uh, is tangent to the path of the projectile uh, but again we can split this into two components one is vx one is vy similarly for this um, location here the total velocity which is v is um, uh, is uh, uh, tangent to the uh, the path of the projectile but again we can split this into two components one is x and one is y now again you can see the difference between uh, this location and this location here that in this location the vy uh, is upward but in this location the vy is downward 
Okay, now uh, uh, one important point that we can use all these equations uh, for the projectile because um, the acceleration is constant uh, for the projectile. Uh, so as you can see that in x direction, uh, there is no acceleration uh, because you just uh, throw the object with some initial velocity and then uh, it depends on the initial velocity and the angle. Uh, and then the uh, and then it's uh, just moving or following this path here uh, but then uh, there is no acceleration in the x direction so the ax is zero so if ax is zero so this means that the uh, acceleration in the uh, uh, the velocity in the x direction will uh, remain constant so this means that this uh, vx naught should be equal to vx should be equal to vx here and in the y direction we have acceleration uh, which is uh, in this case you can see that it's in the uh, in the downward direction so it's which is minus uh, minus g so minus means it's just in the downward direction so uh, this is to show just the uh, the uh, the direction of the of the acceleration now um, if we if we use uh, uh, even these equations here or if we integrate these equations so uh, we can integrate this equation in x direction and in y direction and then we can calculate uh, different equations. So if we uh, use even these equations here uh, for uh, in the x direction. So if you want to calculate uh, because we know the initial uh, velocity here which is vx0 and we know that that in the x direction the uh, the acceleration is zero. So what we can calculate from here that vx is equal to vx0 so because the acceleration in x direction is zero uh, and similarly uh, we can calculate uh, we can use uh, uh, this equation uh, to calculate the the range of the projectile so we represent uh, s by x here and it depends on the uh, the initial position for example if it is zero and plus v naught t so v naught uh, here is uh, v naught x and uh, t and again if you if you have some some initial uh, initial displacement or initial uh, range you can also include that here so x is equal to x naught plus v naught xt uh, so from here you can calculate the uh, and because the acceleration is zero so in x direction so we can just uh, ignore this this part here now in the y direction it's a little bit complicated because in the y direction we have acceleration which is minus g but again we can calculate uh, uh, the uh, the acceleration uh, the velocity in the y direction so if we use this equation the first equation so we can say that vy should be equal to uh, the initial velocity in the y direction so vy naught and then the a is g minus g and then you have t this will be the uh, accelerate uh, the velocity in the uh, along this projectile in the y direction so for example if you are interested to calculate this velocity or this velocity you can use this equation here so vy minus equal to vy naught minus gt and similarly you can use um, uh, this uh, equation to calculate the uh, the y uh, the y displacement so which you can say is y equal to so this will become y naught and plus v naught y t and if you use uh, g here so that will become minus half g t square and so this will be the equation uh, if you want to calculate for example this uh, the distance here the y distance uh, at any uh, instant of time of the projectile so you can use this equation here and these Four equations will be available in the formula sheet in the exam.